I'll take you through the general requirements for lifts, escalators, and passenger conveyors. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Zanele. If you haven't subscribed, press the subscribe button below. Remember to press the notification button so that you get notifications every time I upload new content. So thank you so much to those of you guys that have been sending requests and some of the content that you're wanting to see a lot more of. There is actually something that I want to share with you guys and you would have seen obviously from the title of this video, it's around lifts, escalators and passenger conveyors. So often I've seen also in industry and in the workplace that there is a lot of lack of understanding in the differences between a goods hoist and lifts or passenger conveyors. Escalators are a bit more easier because I think they're more easily identifiable, but don't get caught out by regulatory or legal requirements because there are distinct differences also relating to the safety of the individuals who are using the different types. So you wouldn't want to endanger anybody's life or have an incident because a person was using a goods hoist whereas they weren't supposed to or some of the safeties that you're supposed to have in your lifts are not necessarily there. The OSH Act is clear and the regulations outline specifically what the key aspects are to look out for and what you should ensure that you've got in place. Even if you're not the expert, even if you're not the manufacturer, if you're not the subject matter expert, you can outsource some of the requirements and you can outsource some of the work that you're needing to do to ensure that you comply by law. So if you look at the regulation for lifts, escalators and passenger conveyors, under the general requirements, there are four key things to look out for. That's what I'll share in this video today. I will share subsequent videos as well about further requirements that are needed, but over and above that, we'll also share some of the differences between the regulation under general machinery regulations, also under driven machinery regulations on the differences between the different types. So one of the first things you need to look out for, whether you're writing your GCC exam, because this is one of the regulations that they actually can throw in there, especially when you're writing your law exam, really a nice question to put in your GCC practical assessment, especially under question three, where they ask you about law or under your paper where it's fundamentally about the OSH Act and its regulations. This is really a nice chunky question that they can throw in there. Not only to pass the GCC, but also for your own understanding and to keep your employees safe in the workplace. These are some of the key requirements that you need to know. One of the first ones, in fact, somewhat basic, is around the marking of each of your machines. So for every lift, for every escalator, for every passenger conveyor, you need to ensure that you've got conspicuously marked, so very clearly, very visibly, the name of your manufacturer. So whoever's manufactured your machines, your lift, your escalator, your passenger conveyor, you need to have the manufacturer's name on that nameplate. What's also important is the date of installation. So you need to have the year of installation of, of, your, of your machine. Thirdly, if there are any modifications that happened after installation, you need to have the year of modification also clearly marked on your nameplate. So if there is or there were to be a change in the lift at all, you'd need to obviously update your nameplate and include that date or year of modification. The fourth thing that you require on the nameplate is the official number of your lift, your escalator, or your passenger conveyor. What's also important is for you to also have the rated meters per second, so the speed. So you need to have on your nameplate what the rated speed is of your lift. And last but not least is to have the rated loading. So have the loading in kilograms and what it is that it's rated to hold. So these are the key aspects that are essential not only for, for individual safety, but also to ensure that you're covered by law to have on the nameplate in a clearly visible place on your machine. Second requirement and what's important is for your machine, even if you've got different compartments with the machines, ensure that any switch gear is clearly marked. So for each machine and switch gear that is clearly marked and easily identifiable. The key thing to note, so don't use stickers that can easily peel off because you might get caught out there might be a bit of a mix up and someone switches over some of the stickers or labeling. So try and label it permanently, whether you emboss or engrave. So don't use pens and markers that can easily rub off. Try by all means to try and 
permatize or try and make your markings as permanent as possible so whether by mistake or intention no one can 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 mix around any of the labeling the third requirement is to keep an updated schematic of your electrical wiring so not only is this essential for any maintenance requirements but it's also important for any troubleshooting that you might need to do because this machine especially the lift um, it's got passengers that may potentially be endangered because they're enclosed inside of it so it's important that you've got an up-to-date schematic of your electrical wiring it doesn't necessarily have to be clearly visible for everybody to see but it needs to be kept in a safe place so ensure that it's safely kept and easily accessible by any competent person so that it can be used whenever it is required. Last but not least, very important, is that on every landing or within the machine that you've got the details of the manufacturer or the service provider, competent service provider for your lift, your escalator or your passenger conveyor. So it's very important that at every landing or within the machine or the compartment, anyone that's looking to contact their accredited or competent service provider can easily do so. So it's important that the name and any contact details are readily accessible. Ultimately, whether you're GMR 2.1 or competent person on site, if you're the engineering manager or the competent person with inside services department that's accountable and responsible for lift equipment, especially lifts, passenger conveyors and escalators, where individuals' lives could potentially be in danger, do ensure that you've got these basic requirements in place. There's further information around how to test, how to inspect and what's required. The frequency of that, I'll share that in the next video. Feel free to comment below, ask any questions if you need any additional clarity. What's also important is for you to constantly engage with the Occupational Health and Safety Act and all the regulations, especially if you're a person who's accountable and responsible for, for individual safety in the workplace. Like I mentioned before, what's really incredible and awesome about the regulations is that the guidelines are there. And if you're needing any more additional information, it is out there. I'm also available if anyone wants to ask any questions. Feel free to send me an email or continue to comment below and I'll respond as soon as I get it. Comment below also and share what it is that you feel are the biggest challenges in the workplace in keeping employees safe. And let's have a dialogue on some of the best practices that you employ in your workplace to ensure that you, as far as reasonably practicable, keep everybody safe. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Shout.